In this video, we will have a look at the new tab view design and the new tab type in iOS 26 using Xcode 26. We will implement an entire tab view. We will also have a look at how the new search button works and how we can add that to our app and then also how our tabs are grouping together. So I've already prepared an enum here with four different tabs. So we will have home, profile, settings and search. And then we will get started in our content view. And of course, we will get started by creating a tab view and we will use the overload with a selection. So we always know which tab is currently selected. So we then can perform some code uh, with that information. And for that, of course, we will need to have a state var and I will call this selected tab. This will be of tabs and we will start with home. So this will be the default selection. So let's add this here and let's hit enter on the content. One little trick is if your tab is, I believe it's hashable, then you can change this state to app storage and that way your selected tab is persistent, persisted across app sessions. So if they go to the settings, close the app, open it again, the settings page will also open again in the tab view. So just a nice little tip here. We will not be using that in this example though. So basically the new API that was introduced to enable all of these new features is just called a tab. And we will get started with one of the many overloads here where we provide a title resource, a system image content, and we will also provide a value for the selection. So we will start with the home title and a house system image. And then in here we could just have, for example, a color.green that ignores the safe area just so we have something on screen. And now we get this error message here saying static method build expression requires the types tabs and never be equivalent. Basically, this means that the tab here expects a generic type of tabs, so our selection, and it's currently never. Why is it never? Because we didn't provide a value, and this evaluates to never under the hood because you don't have to have the selection. So if we get rid of the selection, then you will see that this works just fine, but we do want to have it. So what we need to add is a value here, and we will say this is dot home, so this enum case up here. And this way, this is now nicely linked up. And once we add our second tab, you will see how all of this works. So we will have a second tab for the profile as a system image. We will use a person and as the value, we will of course also add profile. And then instead of color.green, let's for example, use color.orange. And then you will see that we already have this new liquid glass tab bar down here and we can move the tabs and you will see that we have home and profile. So let me quickly also add a settings tab and then I'll get right back to you. Okay, so now we have our three basic tabs here, settings, profile and home, and this works just perfectly. Next, let's have a look at how we can implement the little search icon that automatically grows into a search bar. So this has two different components. First of all, we need a dot search role on a tab, and then we will also need to use the dot searchable view modifier on the content of the tab. So let's start by adding another tab and then we can already have a look here at the different um, overloads or the different initializers. So as a value, we will pass dot search. As a role, we will also pass dot search. And then in here is the view that should be shown when we tap on search. Right now, of course, it's empty because this now evaluates to an empty view. Instead, let's fill this with some dummy search view. So I will create a navigation stack. And then in here, I will just have a list. So we have something to scroll and search through. Of course, we won't be implementing actual search logic. And then I will um, adjust our search screen text here. So we have anything on screen. I also have a nav, nav title of search. And then I'll add the searchable view modifier. This needs a binding to a search string. So let's quickly create that uh, state variable up here. So let's do it like that. And then let's wait for our preview to load again. And you can see all of the regular tabs. Then we go to the search tab and it automatically expands into the search bar at the bottom. We can tab it. And then this area, of course, here is reserved for the keyboard, which isn't shown in the preview. 
and we can press X to get rid of it again. And you will notice that all of our three other tabs have collapsed into one and that's the most recently selected one. So if we start at home and go into search, you will see that this is now the home button. If we start at profile, go into search, this is now the profile button. All right, so we get all of these animations for free. Searchable is not at the top of the list anymore. It's now at the bottom of the list floating right next to the tab bar. Okay, lastly, I want to introduce you to another very powerful new API that you've probably already seen in apps like Apple Music, where we have a second bar above our tab bar. And this is just a new view modifier that we can now use and it's called tab view bottom accessory. And in here we can just add, for example, a text of hello from the bottom accessory. And you can see this now floats above the tab view here. It even floats above in the search screen. And of course, this would usually be um, covered by the keyboard. So this works just great. One example what we could do here is instead of saying hello from the bottom accessory, we could say selected tab dot raw value if we conform this to a string. And that way we can, for example, show which tab is currently selected. So home profile settings and of course also search. So this is how you use the tab view bottom accessory.